So, uh, a lot of you guys may not know, but before, all, on, in my past also, I used to teach uh, uh, fighting instruction, and uh, I stopped doing it because I feel that it's a, it's a little bit possibly unethical. Like, I don't feel comfortable teaching just anybody how possibly to, to you know, seriously injure or kill someone else. I realize the tough part is that there are good people that, you know, could benefit from some of this information. But the hard part is, for every good person out there, there's probably two or three bad people who will take that information and use it against you. And so it's hard for me to figure out what I can show in terms of knife defense, and but not have it, you know, like I said, be uh, usable in a negative way. But regardless, I am going to try to discuss a couple ideas and uh, you know, see if, how the feedback is. And if you can see here, I got my uh, goofy little outfit. You know, I, I haven't worn this in a long time. But point is, we're going to go over knife defense, and I got a little list of. Uh, Okay, we'll start with, okay, since me and Mel here, we're at a distance, okay? okay? First, there is a rule, and I'll go over it in a second, a little bit more in depth, but the rule is simple. Against a knife, you never block. You never, ever. I mean it. I mean, please, for your own safety, trust me or not, the, the point is I, I could teach you everything, and then you'll know that I'm right, and the point is you just don't try to block a knife. Let's say, for example, you know, I'll show. Here, Mel. Let's say, for example, I slash at Mel, okay? But, okay, if you guys can see this, this is the first thing you have to understand about a knife, what makes it so deadly, okay? And this is one of those things I don't want to tell people, but you have to know this if you're going to defend against it. If you look at where we are right now, okay? A punch, let's say Mel blocks my punch, okay? A, block it, okay. A punch is a strike. So it hits, or it doesn't hit, you know, if I punch this way and she blocks, okay, whatever, she's not that good. The point, I'm still training her, but the point is, it's it's just one way, basically, you're saying. If, for example, if I punch and she pushes my arm, you know, up, okay, that's fine. He's not going to hurt anything above my hand. Now, let's say, for example, though it's the, the knife. Let's say, for example, she, here, we'll go on her hand, and, and you, she pushes it down, okay? If I was stabbing forward, her pushing it down now can make me cut down. If, for example, if I slash, for example, this way and somehow she blocks like this, okay? That doesn't stop me now from just turning and going down. A knife is it's different than a strike because a knife doesn't have to hit, it just has to move. Just the fact of it moving around. For example, she just blocked with her hand like before, okay? All I have to do is just move my hand down and it'll cut the forearm. So you have to understand a knife is a whole different thing, and you never, ever use your hands against it unless you, of course, we're going to have to go into that, unless you literally have to because you're stuck. That is only when, and in that instance, okay, you are already losing. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about. First of all, okay, when you fight against a knife, you're always on the defensive. You never are on the offensive anymore. That idea does not exist. Don't try it. Now, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so first rule is distance equals time. Okay? The more space I have from her, the more time I have to react. And same thing. If I'm attacking her, it takes me more time to slash her or poke her because it's further distance. I have to go further. So the, the safest, how do you say, the quickest defense she can do is give herself more time by backing up, which is then what leads to the next idea. Fighting at a distance is linear on a line. Okay? If if, for example, we are up close, fighting is not just forward and back. Fighting can be from the sides. It can be side to side, because she could punch me and I could punch, and I could shift to the side. Or, you know, or for example, I could hit her from the side, and so she can't shift to the side, or I could punch her straight forward. You know, so, so it's kind of like a, a Rochambeau. I punch forward, she can move to the side. I punch sideways, she shouldn't move forward. She should move down or something, you know? You can, you can kind of see that. A, a swing, is circular, it's horizontal, it's like covering a sweeping plane, okay? It's like hitting anything in this path if I uppercut, hitting anything in the path if I swing, or going straight, okay? But at a distance, all fighting becomes linear. The further you are, the more straight it becomes. My swing, was a, that was a hook, no longer is horizontal as much. It's more now of a cross where it, it has to kind of start to go more diagonally forward rather than straight around. It has to kind of reach her. So again, that logic then is, at a distance, 
moving back and forth, creating space is your safest way to, to avoiding attack. Okay? Rule number one. Distance is time, and at a distance, all flying is back and forth. So really, the easiest thing to do is just to keep backing up and going forward. Okay? Now, the thing is, first of all, note on movement. You never, ever, fatal flaw number one, okay? Let me explain this. You don't ever lean back. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to teach why. Okay? Sorry. But the point is, if you lean back or you lean forward, you lean side to side, if you stand all your way on one leg, or you shift your weight leg all to your rear leg, Okay, you're stuck. You've put too much committed motion in one direction. You've got a momentum of your body going that direction. You're kind of stuck, and you're not able to quickly react. Now, this is a simplified way of instructing this, but the point is, generally speaking, you try it for simple, simple practice here, okay? You just keep your weight in the middle, in between your legs, in between your arms. You just kind of keep yourself balanced. You know, you don't take weird, crazy, gaping, you know, movements and large movements to dodge out of the way, or you're in trouble. You're definitely in trouble. For example, if Mel leans back, say you didn't step, move back. Okay, say she leans back, she's in trouble because her all her weight's here now and she can't move back anymore. Therefore, basically planting herself in one position. She's stuck there. Uh, now she's not fully stuck there. She has some last ditch attempts, but that was the first mistake. And and you understand, it can happen really fast. Okay, the mistakes. It's it's not like you know you have you know restart or you know next round. Okay, so. Now, if at a distance flying is linear, of course I can't keep backing up at some point, I'm gonna run into something or I'm running around in space. If perhaps I can run, that's great, okay? Now, at some point, I'm gonna to have to perhaps move around, okay? Now, come over here. Now, if you look at Mel, this is something, okay, whether these are the correct terminology, it, it doesn't really matter, everyone has different ways of saying it. I used to call this the outside, because it's outside of her, I guess her shoulder, outside of her body, and this is the inside, because I'm in between her hands. You could call this the live side, and you could call this the safe side. Because when I'm over here, I'm more safe from getting hit from that hand, which is still live and moving like a gun or something, cocked and ready to go. And this is the live side. Preferably, you want to move to the to the safe side, not the live side. Because I mean, if you start moving this way, I could get caught by that. So if you can, let's try to go always by default. Preferred number one, go to the outside, the safe side. Now the thing is. Now, if distance is time, okay, when I move sideways, I'm not moving back anymore. If me and Mel, for example, right now, hypothetically, we were like five feet from each other, four feet from each other, okay? If I move straight back and she moves straight forward, and she's not much taller than me or faster than me, those things all come into account, okay? If she's tall and fast, it's much more difficult for someone like me. But let's say she moves forward and I move back, okay, we are kind of equal. We're playing an equal, you know, an equal balancing game. But now, if I step sideways, she moves forward. You see, I've lost distance, therefore I've lost time to react. So, this can, moving to the side can be a fatal flaw too when we're talking knife buying because it's a distance thing. You, you know, like a fencing, European fencing, you want to kind of, you basically, basically this, before you start stepping to the side, you want to create some space. Because if you start doing it here, you're, you're not enough space and time to move to the side because it's going to move straight at you. And of course, going straight at you, is closing the distance. Me going to the side is not making more distance. It's just moving to the side. Okay? So that would be things to practice number one. First, distance is safety and time to react. Number two, you try to go to the safe side so that you're eliminating threats, Okay, which I'm going to talk to next. You go to the safe side, and remember, don't do it initially. Okay? You give yourself some, some, some space before you attempt it, and hopefully you're not, you'll have a wall here, Okay, which we're going to keep talking about. Now, so the, the next thing is, okay, and remember, keep your weight kind of in the middle. No ridiculously like this, okay? No, 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 no. Because the thing is, you don't know what they're going to do. And, and here's the thing, okay. Some of this stuff you're going to see, it's not so much that they're like this professional that knows how to set you up. You know, to fake high or fake low or, or to, to purposely go like this, just to psych you out so that they're going to punch you, you know? So you have to, you have to kind of not overcommit to any movements until they commit to something equally as extreme or as, uh, as how you say, more serious. Because I mean, if it's just this and she commits, you see, damn, she just messed up, okay? Because she just basically pushed both her arms out and all I do is just do this. I mean, and she can't block this 
if this is already going down. And I can anticipate, since she's going to have to probably block this, to just do that. Which is why knife filing is just so, so dangerous, okay? Now, the next idea is this. You neutralize the threat, okay? Okay, you have to deal with the threats. In that instance, it's the knife, okay? Now, okay, so general rule always is, rather than staying here in the live side and having to figure out which hand she's gonna punch me with, which even though you could train and get your reflexes down, it's still like shit, you know, which one is she gonna do? You, you wanna make your life easier and preferably eliminate as much as you can, you know, so that you're dealing with less possibility. In this situation, I'm dealing with her thrusting straight at me, slashing at me horizontally, all kind of nonsense, basically the knife moving around, horrible. And I'm dealing with that hand possibly striking me, and legs, and then I get into that, okay? By going over here, I'm less likely to be punched by this hand. And if I am going to be punched by this hand, it's obvious what kind of attack it's going to be. Because it's a distance, it's going to be somewhat linear. If she is going to swing around, it's going to have to curve back in towards me and converge again, just like distance fighting, which means it's easier to dodge at a close range by moving to the side. So, you understand? So here we are, and for some reason, I end up here, thankfully, luckily, and she threw still a punch. It's not hard to just step aside at this close range, okay? So, always, even if she didn't have armed weapons on her, okay? I'm dealing with two hands, which one she gonna punch me with? In fact, the more and more I'm in her, inside between her hands, I'm like, shit, is she gonna punch me, you know, in between my hands, outside, around? Is she gonna punch me with the left or right? I mean, you don't do that. You, if it all means you start to limit, the more I move around here, the more, less I have to worry about this live side hand. And I only have to deal some more with this hand. Now, some last options, okay? And these are gonna take you to, you're gonna have to practice this. You do have the option of trying to kick her, okay? If she has a knife, you have the option of trying to kick her because she already has a reach advantage because of the knife, you know? She will always hit me before I ever hit her, always. In fact, if I started before she started, there's a chance that she will meet me before I meet her still because she is a longer reach. So it's something you don't want to attempt unless you have a weapon as long. Here's the catch though. It's very easy for you to get cut in your leg because as again, it could just go down. You know, it's, it doesn't even think have to be a thing of them knowing that skill. Like I said, sometimes it's just random that these things occur. She's not an expert, but it occurs. I kick her perhaps and as an individual, she, you know, when I kick her, her hands go down, you know, because she's stunned by it or something and it nicks my leg. If you get cut in the leg, you are in big, big, big trouble. So this is not something I necessarily suggest. It is just a last, last-ish option that could work. It could work. You, you're going to have to take your chances. I mean, if you're up against a wall and you can't move left or right, and now this person's coming at you, and, you know, based on the rule, you can't block it, you know, you might want to consider taking the risk of cutting because, you know what, getting your leg cut. Because, you know what, if you kick her and she cuts your leg, you weren't going to move anywhere anyway because you were up against a wall. So, heck, it might be something you want to consider. Is it the best? No. Uh, kicking would just be like a simple thrust kick. You know, you just kind of, it's not this nonsense of flicking, okay? It is a sort of forward thrust. Like as if you're stomping down something, but that thing kept moving up, okay? And you try to push into her. It's like a, you call it like a mule kick or something. You want to just do that, okay? You can never fly hand, empty hand to knife, and, and really, it won't go well. Especially if they're trained, you won't, won't win without a weapon. You won't. You will at least sustain some injury if you do win. I mean, we're talking, you're, you're lucky, lucky. And you're gonna have to have some training, okay? I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. There's so many fatal flaws. Basically, you stepped one step wrong and you're done. You know, and there's multiple combinations, again, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna teach that. But the point being is this, if at all means you can get something between you and her, or you and the opponent, I, mean, I, don't, I don't care what it is. If it's a, a stick, I, like let's say for example, it's a hanger, okay? Thank God, I would be so happy if I had this. I'd be so happy. I'd be like, I'd hold on to this for dear life, and like, I don't know, but you know what? Something between me and her, and I got more reach, okay? Anything, a chair, you know, as you're moving away and moving around, maybe you can get yourself in between a car or a table, then you're safe. I mean, you just keep, you know, she keeps going this way, you keep going this way, you just keep going around the table, and you never, you know, someone give up eventually, hopefully, you know? A purse, you know, if you're lucky, maybe your purse can, you know, 
uh, can deflect it, act as a shield temporarily to just kind of blanket the knife with the purse so that you can just literally rush them with the purse and your purse catch the knife and it stabs through the purse and then you can start, you know, hopefully, or you can, or heck, you can just do that and run. You know, anything you have, anything, just is better than going empty hand. You have to have some kind of, now I'm going to do a video on a, a little neat, I dropped the hanger on my dog, uh, a neat uh, little EDC realistic thing you can have on you that will be very, very effective against the knife in the next bit to come, okay? Now, let's say you can't, and you're stuck here now, and, 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 and you have to block it, okay? I'm not gonna go over all the blocks, I'm just gonna go over the idea of blocking a knife, okay? Let's say, for example, uh, okay, okay, this is what happened last time, right? I went in here and she blocked, right? The problem is, you see, this knife can move up, down, right, left, right, and back and forward. So the only way to completely block a knife is to limit the opponent's arm movement in all four directions, and preferably even back and forward. So for example, she has her hand, her knife here. If I can stop, if this happens, okay? Get the camera, okay? This happens, and she pulls back. I have to be able to stop it from pulling back. And let's say she wants to push forward. I have to be able to stop it from pushing forward. If she wants to go down, something has to be able to stop it from going down. She wants to come towards me, something has to stop from coming towards me. And if it goes that way, I can give her crap, you know? Okay? But you understand what I'm saying? If it was like this, same thing. She can't move towards me, push in towards me and stab me. She can't, you have control. And it's very simple. You got one on top, one on bottom, something on the, the left side, something on the right side, or the outside, safe side, and live side. You know what I'm saying? Four sides cover, up, down, left, right, and preferably, if you understand this, back and forward too. Now, this is the ultimate way you could ever get it. This is, uh, you're, you know, be thankful. I mean, it could be this. This is another way to do that same effect, but with much less guarantee. But I mean, if you're fine with life and you grip as hard as you can and hope they're not, you know, and they're moving as hard as they can do to hurt you, this is not, I mean, it sucks more here because now you're not controlling up here and she can pull and perhaps, you know, but I mean, it depends on what you're doing, how strong you are and what you try to do, okay? You have to, this is the same idea, up, down, you know, my fingers are left and right, okay? Back and forth is me holding on, not letting it slip. But you have to neutralize the threat, because again, here's the catch. You cannot just let it be, you cannot just let it keep going. You can't just say, I'm gonna punch to make her lose her weapon, because it, it, you're, you have to neutralize the threat, because this is totally different now. Because I could punch her, maybe like, say for example, she punches, okay, I punch her and she stabs me, okay? Okay. How can I guarantee, guarantee that I didn't get stabbed when I punched? Now, let's say hypothetically, fine. Let's say I punched her, at, but okay, how many times can I punch her and make it hurt, or whatever I hit her? And how many times can she stab me and actually cause serious damage? It's much easier. You, you cannot, I mean, you could just be punching and moving around, and she could just be flailing around, and you'd be getting cut this whole dang time. You, it, it is, you don't go in on a knife, you're basically running yourself into a point. You just, it's, it's, you're impaling yourself, it's stupid. You, you neutralize that arm, okay? Now, so again, basically what we're trying to say is you're trying to catch it with two hands. If you can do that, count your blessings. Now, when, let's say that happens, okay? We'll start with this. Let's say hypothetically you were able to, okay? This is a hypothetical, you somehow, she stabbed me, you somehow luckily caught it, okay? Who knows? You, someone goes like that and they slash at you and you luckily, I don't know, you catch it or something. Who knows, okay? You don't stay towards the live side you obviously go to the safe side, okay? Because you have to neutralize now that threat. So it's simple, the next rule is always go around. Always go around. Get away from the other threat. You can either do this in two ways. You can move yourself, and preferably not just let them stand there, but because they're gonna be pulling around, so you, you pull them and move, which then helps you not have to move as fast. You know, you can pull them and calm but if you're, not, if you're not fast, pull them, because you're strong. If you're slow, you know, if you're fast, you can do this and move and not maybe have to pull them. But regardless, you're doing something that's moving them, not just having them stand there. They're not just this dummy, you know, that just is gonna stand and let you hold the wrist. They're gonna start moving around and probably hitting you. So you've got to be active here, proactive here. You have to be on the offensive. This isn't offensive. If you do this, that is offense. You know, because, you know, right, okay? <laughs> that is still an offensive technique. And fuck, sorry, oh shit. And plus, when you get here, now, You've moved from here to a more controlled situation where now this is the 
blocking this direction, this is blocking that direction, this is blocking it back. I mean, now you have more control of the knife, okay? You have to figure this out, okay? You have to move. So for example, that, that goofy karate block. Now why do I say do not use your hands, okay? Let's say for example, okay, do the messed up one, okay? You remember I make a mistake anymore? Okay, the stupid karate block. Yeah, okay, that X block. Okay, let's say that she did this, right? Okay, she pushes it down, it might cut her leg. So let's say for example, she moves her leg out of the way. Okay, her head is now forward. Show them the camera. Her head's now forward, it's like, now she's off balance, she can't move back. There's no way she can move her whole entire upper body back faster than I can just punch her. Okay, but that's not really so much a big deal if I want to punch her now. It's the fact that now, this is a common idea in knife fighting, and, and you could just call it like sweeping the hand. If I go and, I, and, and she does this, right? Now understand, see, she's doing the best she can do. If she can't grab it, you know, this is, this is you know, a larger area of protection, chance that she, I'm gonna run into that is better, but, you see, this is controlling only two directions. That way and this way, oh, three directions, maybe forward. But it doesn't control downward, it doesn't control necessarily inward as well, you know, or back. And if this is a double side knife, it will cut still. Or heck, if you hold the knife in a knife fine manner, you can still cut, okay? Uh, I don't know why I said that, I might edit that out. Okay, the point being is this. You see, this, this is horrible, but it's the best sometimes you may be able to do. And if this happens, you have to learn this now. It's very easy, may not be on purpose. It could happen in a variety of ways, but it's called basically sweeping the hand or checking, I call it checking the arm, okay? Basically checking that threat as if like in chess, you know, like a checkmate. She has made a mistake already, which is she's crossed her arms, and this hand can be easily just pushed up out of the way. Now, from here, what does that mean? I could, I, how I could cut her? Well, it's easy. Without this one preventing this motion, right? It's easy to just go like that and cut her, and then finish from there. So the point being is this, you don't, so this is the next rule. When you try to attempt that stupid X block, which I don't like, but it's something that easy to, you know, hey, you might feel safe doing that, because I mean, you, it is what? Do you remember now? Okay, good. The arm, okay, the arm that I'm attacking with, the right, if it's my right arm holding the knife, her right arm goes down on it first. If it's the other way, same thing. Her left arm goes down on my left arm first. And the other hand, the, the rear hand, her live hand, goes on top. Because now, let's say for example, here we are again. Okay. Okay. So if she does that stupid X block, you see, okay, if she does it where her live arm, her live side is on top of this arm, then I can't deflect it up, which helps because she can you know, keep it down. She can keep pushing it down. Now if I move it inward then, Okay, and that's what I'm saying. Someone might not be a skilled fighter and do this. Someone might actually just be rushing you or something. They might just think to just to rush you. They don't might have more logic than than just to move forward and be a large you know thrust. They're pushing all their body into it. Okay, this could happen. So she must move away from my live side. That's the only way. And now my turn. You show. So you you stab. So she stabs low. Okay, and and the best I can do when she stabs from my stomach is I, I go like this. Okay, I don't know. Okay, you're like ah. Okay, that sucks. She tries to sweep it. My arm up. She can't because this arm's blocking it. You know? From here, you might be a lucky to maybe grab or something, but let's say the point is this, okay? She can still push my arm towards me. So therefore, that's what I'm saying. Once you have some degree of limiting the mo mo movement, the possible movement of her arm, you must move aside. You must, preferably, you might as well start pushing downward to eliminate the possibility of it going upward and, and inward. So when this happens, and she tries to deflect it, she's going to move inward, I'm going to move inward, but I'm going to move it out first, and I'm going to try to move to the side. And if I can't move it out, I'm going to at least move to the side, so that I am now away from her live side. Basically, the arm that's basically doing all this crazy nonsense to me, you know? That's about to like, you know, basically let me get killed. I think that's good enough for today. Uh, you guys tell me how you like this kind of video. It's a lot of concepts that you do are going to have to practice. Uh, in the, in, in the end, you, know, you shouldn't even, like I said, that's what I'm saying, preferably just make some space, put something like a table between you guys. Don't even attempt it without some practice beforehand. Because uh, if, you, if you do, though, decide to take some what I'm telling you and practice it, then bear in mind that these ideas, you know, perhaps you could practice what I'm talking about and understanding that, that you have to, you know, those ideas and keep putting it into practice. Because even with, 
my uh, little EDC system I have as a weapon that you can carry, the, you're, that's legal and, and non-lethal, um, that's very effective, you're still gonna have to train that and still train some general idea of how to move your body. You know, because again, if, if, if her reaction is to, to lean back, you know, see what she even blocked it, she committed the error again. She blocked it with her hand, she really got cut in the hand. She leans back, she's off balance. She, she's already losing it. It's just so easy to make a mistake. You, you stay balanced, you know, and, and you, you, you try to stay kind of light just oh, and to know your, the amount of movement, the, the distance you can move is relation, in relation to how wide your feet are apart. Okay, if my feet are close together, then I can take a long step over here. If my feet are already like this, or already like this, I can only step up here. Meaning, same thing, if I want to be able to move really quickly away from her, it's not good to have my feet wide apart. Okay guys, keep your feet kind of closer together. I mean, not too close, where you're like basically a, a little balloon thing that can move around like this, but enough to where you are giving yourself some room. I mean, it's kind of one of those things, I mean, if her feet are wide and your feet are narrow, you're gonna step further than she can, which is good on your part. But you know what I mean? But if your feet are wide and her feet are close together, she's going to take a deep lunge and you're only going to move a little bit back and you're going to get hurt. So, preferably, you know, you, 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 you try to keep your steps small and light and keep trying to move this fight somewhere else. Preferably you closer to some kind of weapon if you don't have something on you. Okay? So, uh, thank you. Thank you.